section one of the garden of karma less than the dust by lawrence hope less than the dust beneath thy chariot wheel less than the rust that never stained thy sword less than the trust thou hast in me o oh lord even less than these less than the weed that grows beside thy door less than the speed of hours spent far from thee less than the need thou hast in life of me even less am i since i o oh lord am nothing unto thee see here thy sword i make it keen and bright love's last reward death comes to me to-night farewell zahiruddin end of poem to the unattainable by lawrence hope oh that my blood were water thou a thirst and thou and i in some far desert land how would i shed it gladly if but first it touched thy lips before it reached the sand once ah the gods were good to me i threw myself upon a poison snake that crept where my beloved a lesser love we knew than this which now consumes me wholly slept but thou alas what can i do for thee by fate and thine own beauty set above the need of all or any aid from me too high for service as too far for love end of poem in the early pearly morning song by valgovind the fields are full of poppies and the skies are very blue by the temple in the coppice i wait beloved for you the level land is sunny and the errant air is gay with scent of rose and honey will you come to me to-day from carven walls above me smile lovers many a pair oh take this rose and love me she has twined it in her hair he advances she retreating pursues and holds her fast the sculptor left them meeting in a close embrace at last through centuries together in the carven stone they lie in the glow of golden weather and endless azure sky oh that we who have for pleasure so short and scant a stay should we waste our summer leisure will you come to me to-day the temple bells are ringing for the marriage month has come i hear the women singing and the throbbing of the drum and when the song is failing or the drums a moment mute the weirdly wistful wailing of the melancholy flute little life has got to offer and little man to lose since to-day fate deigns to proffer oh wherefore then refuse to take this transient hour in the dusky temple gloom while the poppies are in flower and the mango trees of bloom and if fate remember later and come to claim her due what sorrow will be greater than the joy i had with you for to-day lit by your laughter between the crushing years i will chance in the hereafter eternities of tears end of poem reverie of mohammed akram at the tamarind tank the desert is parched in the burning sun and the grass is scorched and white but the sand is past and the march is done we are camping here to-night i sit in the shade of the temple walls while the cadenced water evenly falls and a peacock out of the jungle calls to another on yonder tomb above half seen in the lofty gloom strange works of a long dead people loom obscene and savage and half effaced an elephant hunt a musician's feast and curious matings of man and beast what did they mean to the men who are long since dust whose fingers traced in this arid waste 
these rioting twisted figures of love and lust strange weird things that no man may say things humanity hides away secretly done catch the light of the living day smile in the sun cruel things that man may not name naked here without fear or shame laugh in the carven stone deep in the temple's innermost shrine is set where the bats and the shadows dwell the worn and ancient symbol of life at rest in its oval shell by which the men who of old the land possessed represented their great destroying power i cannot forget that just as my life was touching its fullest flower love came and destroyed it all in a single hour therefore the dual mystery suits me well sitting alone the tank's deep water is cool and sweet soothing and fresh to the wayworn feet dreaming under the tamarind shade one silently thanks the men who made so green a place in this bitter land of sunburnt sand the peacocks scream and the grey doves coo little green talkative parrots woo and small grey squirrels with fear askance at alien me in their furtive glance come shyly with quivering fur to see the stranger under their tamarind tree daylight dies the camp fires redden like angry eyes the tents show white in the glimmering light spirals of tremulous smoke arise to the purple skies and the hum of the camp sounds like the sea drifting over the sand to me afar in the desert some wild voice sings to a jangling zither with minor strings and under the stars growing keen above i think of the thing that i love a beautiful thing alert serene with passionate dreaming wistful eyes dark and deep as mysterious skies seen from a vessel at sea alas you drifted away from me and time and space have rushed in between but they cannot undo the thing that has been though it never again may be you were mine from dusk until dawning light for the perfect whole of that bygone night you belonged to me they say that love is a light thing a foolish thing and a slight thing a ripe fruit rotten at core they speak in this futile fashion to me who am racked with passion tormented beyond compassion for ever and ever more they say that possession lessens a lover's delight as radiant mornings fade into afternoon i held what i loved in my arms for many a night yet ever the morning lightened the sky too soon beyond our tents the sands stretch level and far around this little oasis of tamarind trees a curious eastern fragrance fills the breeze from the ruinous temple garden where roses are i dream of the rose-like perfume that fills your hair of times when my lips were free of your soft closed eyes while down in the tank the waters ripple and rise and the flying foxes silently cleave the air the present is subtly welded into the past my love of you with the purple indian dusk with its clinging scent of sandal incense and musk and withering jasmine flowers 
my eyes grow dim and my senses fail at last while the lonely hours follow each other silently one by one till the night is almost done then weary and drunk with dreams with my garments damp and heavy with dew i wander towards the camp tired with a brain in which fancy and fact are blent i stumble across the ropes till i reach my tent and then to rest to ensweeten my sleep with lies to dream i lie in the light of your long-lost eyes my lips set free to love and linger over your soft loose hair to dream i lay your delicate beauty bare to solace my fevered eyes ah if my life might end in a night like this drift into death from dreams of your granted kiss end of poem verses you are my god and i would fain adore you with sweet and secret rites of other days burn scented oil and silver lamps before you pour perfume on your feet with prayer and praise yet are we one your gracious condescension granted and grants the loveliness i crave one in the perfect sense of eastern mention gold and the bracelet water and the wave end of poem song of Konzada. as one may sip a stranger's bowl you gave yourself but not your soul i wonder now that time has passed where you will come to rest at last you gave your beauty for an hour i held it gently as a flower you wished to leave me told me so i kissed your feet and let you go end of poem the teak forest whether i loved you who shall say whether i drifted down your way in the endless river of chance and change and you woke the strange unknown longings that have no names but burn us all in their hidden flames who shall say life is a strange and a wayward thing we heard the bells of the temples ring the married children in passing sing the month of marriage the month of spring was full of the breath of sunburnt flowers that bloom in a fiercer light than ours and under a sky more fiercely blue i came to you you told me tales of your vivid life where death was cruel and danger rife of deep dark forests of poisoned trees of pains and passions that scorch and freeze of southern noontides and eastern nights where love grew frantic with strange delights while men were slaying and maidens danced till i who listened lay still entranced then swift as a swallow heading south i kissed your mouth one night when the plains were bathed in blood from sunset light in a crimson flood we wandered under the young teak trees whose branches wind in the light night breeze you led me down to the water's brink the spring where the panthers come to drink at night there is always water here be the season never so parched and sear have we souls of beasts in the forms of men i fain would have tasted your life-blood then the night fell swiftly this sudden land can never lend us a twilight strand twixt the daylight shore and the ocean night but takes as it gives at once the light we laid us down on the steep hillside while far below us wild peacocks cried 
and we sometimes heard in the sunburnt grass the stealthy steps of the jungle pass we listened knew not whether they went on love or hunger the more intent and under your kisses i hardly knew whether i loved or hated you but your words were flame and your kisses fire and who shall resist a strong desire not i whose life is a broken boat on a sea of passions adrift afloat and whether i came in love or hate that i came to you was written by fate in every hue of the blood-red sky in every tone of the peacock's cry while every gust of the jungle night was fanning the flame you had set alight for these things have power to stir the blood and compel us all to their own chance mood and to love or not we are no more free than a ripple to rise and leave the sea we are ever and always slaves of these of the suns that scorch and the winds that freeze of the faint sweet scents of the sultry air of the half-heard howl from the far-off lair these chance things master us ever compel to the heights of heaven the depths of hell whether i love you you do not ask nor waste yourself on the thankless task i give your kisses at least return what matter whether they freeze or burn i feel the strength of your fervent arms what matter whether it heals or harms you are wise you take what the gods have sent you ask no questions but rest content so i am with you to take your kiss and perhaps i value you more for this for this is wisdom to love to live to take what fate or the gods may give to ask no question to make no prayer to kiss the lips and caress the hair speed passion's ebb as you greet its flow to have to hold and in time let go and this is our wisdom we rest together on the great lone hills in the storm-filled weather and watch the skies as they pale and burn the golden stars in their orbits turn while love is with us and time and peace and life has nothing to give but these but whether you love me who shall say or whether you drifting down my way in the great sad river of chance and change with your looks so weary and words so strange lit my soul from some hidden flame to a passionate longing without a name who shall say not i who am but a broken boat content for a while to drift afloat in the little noontide of love's delights between two nights end of poem valgavin's boat song waters glisten and sunbeams quiver the wind blows fresh and free take my boat to your breast o oh river carry me out to sea this land is laden with fruit and grain with never a place left free for flowers a fruitful mother but i am fain for brides in their early bridal hours take my boat to your breast o oh river carry me out to sea the sea beloved by a thousand ships is maiden ever and fresh and free ah for the touch of her cool green lips carry me out to sea take my boat to your breast dear river and carry it out to sea end of poem kashmiri song by jumwa you never loved me and yet to save me one unforgettable night you gave me such chill embraces 
as the snow-covered heights receive from clouds in northern auroral nights such keen communion as the frozen mere has with immaculate moonlight cold and clear and all desire like failing fire died slowly faded surely and sank to rest against the delicate chillness of your breast end of poem zero in captivity love me a little lord or let me go i am so weary walking to and fro through all your lonely halls that were so sweet did they but echo to your coming feet when by the flowered scrolls of lace-like stone our women's windows i am left alone across the yellow desert looking forth i see the purple hills towards the north behind those jagged mountains lilac crest once lay the captive bird's small rifled nest there was my brother slain my sister bound his blood her tears drunk by the thirsty ground then while the burning village smoked on high and desecrated all the peaceful sky they took us captive us born frank and free on fleet strong camels through the sandy sea yet when we rested night times on the sand by the rare waters of this weary land our captors ere the camp was wrapped in sleep talked and i listened and forgot to weep is he not brave and fair they asked our king slender as one tall palm tree by a spring erect serene with gravely brilliant eyes as deeply dark as are these desert skies truly no bitter fate they said and smiled awaits the beauty of this captured child then something in my heart began to sing and secretly i longed to see the king sometimes the other maidens sat in tears sometimes consoled they jested at their fears musing what lovers time to them would bring but i was silent thinking of the king till when the weary endless sands were past when far to south the city rose at last all speech forsook me and my eyelids fell since i already loved my lord so well then the division some were sent away to merchants in the city some they say to summer palaces beyond the walls but me they took straight to the sultan's halls every morning i would wake and say ah sisters shall i see our lord to-day the women robed me perfumed me and smiled when were his feet unfleet to pleasure child and tales they told me of his deeds in war of how his name was reverenced afar and crouching closer in the lamp's faint glow they told me of his beauty speaking low what need what need the women wasted art i loved you with every fibre of my heart already my god when did i not love you in life in death when shall i not love you you never seek me all day long i lie watching the changes of the far-off sky behind the lattice-work of carven stone and all night long alas i lie alone but you come never ah my lord the king how can you find it well to do this thing come once come only 
sometimes as i lie i doubt if i shall see you first or die ah could i hear your footsteps at the door hallow the lintel and caress the floor then i might drink your beauty satisfied die of delight ere you could reach my side alas you come not lord life's flame burns low faint for a loveliness it may not know faint for your face oh come come soon to me lest though you should not death should set me free end of poem marriage thoughts by morcelin khan bridegroom i give you my house and my lands all golden with harvest my sword my shield and my jewels the spoils of my strife my strength and my dreams and aught i have gathered of glory and to-night to-night i shall give you my very life bride i may not raise my eyes o oh my lord towards you and i may not speak what matter my voice would fail but through my downcast lashes feeling your beauty i shiver and burn with pleasure beneath my veil younger sisters we throw sweet perfume upon her head and delicate flowers round her bed ah would that it were our turn to wed mother i see my daughter vaguely through my tears ah lost caresses of my early years i see the bridegroom king of men in truth ah my first lover and my vanished youth bride almost i dread this night my senses fail me how shall i dare to clasp a thing so dear many have feared your name but i your beauty lord of my life be gentle to my fear younger sisters in the softest silk is our sister dressed with silver and rubies upon her breast where a dearer treasure to-night will rest dancing girls see his hair is like silk and his teeth are whiter than whitest of jasmine flowers pity they marry him thus i would change my jewels against his caresses verily sisters this marriage is greatly a loss to us bride would that the music ceased and the night drew round us with solitude shadow and sound of closing doors so that our lips might meet and our beings mingle while mine drank deep of the essence beloved of yours passing mendicant out of the joy of your marriage feast o oh brothers be good to me the way is long and the shrine is far where my weary feet would be and feasting is always somewhat sad to those outside the door still love is only a dream and life itself is hardly more end of poem to the unattainable lament of muhammad akram i would have taken golden stars from the sky for your necklace i would have shaken rose leaves for your rest from all the rose trees but you had no need the short sweet grass sufficed for your slumber and you took no heed of such trifles as gold or a necklace there is an hour at twilight too heavy with memory there is a flower that i fear for your hair had its fragrance i would have squandered youth for you and its hope and its promise before you wandered careless away from my useless passion but what is the use of my speech since i know of no words to recall you 
i am praying that time may teach you your cruelty me forgetfulness end of poem mohammed akram's appeal to the stars oh silver stars that shine on what i love touch the soft hair and sparkle in the eyes send from your calm serenity above sleep to whom sleepless here despairing lies broken forlorn upon the desert sand that sucks these tears and utterly abased looking across the lonely level land with thoughts more desolate than any waste planets that shine on what i so adore now thrown the hour is late in careless rest protect that sleep which i may watch no more i the cast out dismissed and dispossessed far in the hillside camp in slumber lies what my worn eyes worship but never see happier stars your myriad silver eyes feast on the quiet face denied to me loved with a love beyond all words or sense lost with a grief beyond the saltest tear so lovely so removed remote and hence so doubly and so desperately dear stars from your skies so purple and so calm that through the centuries your secrets keep send to this worn-out brain some occult balm send me for many nights so sleepless sleep and ere the sunshine of the desert jars my sense with sorrow and another day through your soft magic o oh, my silver stars turn sleep to death in some mysterious way end of poem reminiscence of muhammad akram i shall never forget you never never escape your memory woven about the beautiful things of life the sudden thought of your face is like a wound when it comes unsought on some scent of jasmine lilies or pale tuberose any one of the sweet white fragrant flowers flowers i used to love and lay in your hair sunset is terribly sad i saw you stand tall against the red and the gold like a slender palm the light wind stirred your hair as you waved your hand waved farewell as ever serene and calm to me the passion wearied and tossed and torn riding down the road in the gathering grey since that day the sunset red is empty the gold forlorn often across the banqueting board at nights men linger about your name in careless praise the name that cuts deep into my soul like a knife and the gay guest faces and flowers and leaves and lights fade away from the failing sense in a haze and the music sways far away in unmeasured distance i cannot forget i cannot escape what are the stars to me stars that meant so much too much in my youth stars that sparkled about your eyes made a radiance round your hair what are they now lingering lights of a finished feast little lingering sparks rather of a light that is long gone out end of poem story by lalaji the priest he loved the plant with a keen delight a passionate fervour strange to see tended it ardently day and night 
yet never a flower lit up the tree the leaves were succulent thick and green and cecil out of the snake-like stem rose spine-like fingers alert and keen to catch at aught that molested them but though they nurtured it day and night with love and labour the child and he were never granted the longed-for sight of a flower crowning the twisted tree until one evening a wayworn priest stopped for the night in the temple shade and shared the fare of their simple feast under the vines and the jasmine laid he later wandering round the flowers paused a while by the blossomless tree the man said may it be fault of ours that never its buds my eyes may see a slip it came from the further east many a sunlit summer ago it grows in our jungles said the priest men see it rarely but this i know the jungle people worship it say they bury a child around its roots bury it living the only way to crimson glory of flowers and fruits he spoke in whispers his furtive glance probing the depths of the garden shade the man came closer with eyes askance the child beside them shivered afraid a cold wind drifted about the three jarring the spines with a hungry sound the spines that grew on the snake-like tree and guarded its roots beneath the ground after the fall of the summer rain the plant was glorious redly gay blood-red with blossom never again men saw the child in the temple play end of poem request give me yourself one hour i do not crave for any love or even thought of me come as a sultan may caress a slave and then forget for ever utterly come as west winds that passing cool and wet o'er desert places leave them fields in flower and all my life for i shall not forget will keep the fragrance of that perfect hour end of poem story of udaipur told by lalaji the priest and when the summer heat is great and every hour intense the mogra with its subtle flowers intoxicates the sense the cocoa palms stood tall and slim against the golden glow and all their grey and graceful plumes were waving to and fro she lay forgetful in the boat and watched the dying sun sink slowly lakewards while the stars replaced him one by one she saw the marble temple walls long white reflections make the echoes of their silver bells were blown across the lake the evening air was very sweet from off the island bowers came scents of mogra trees in bloom and oleander flowers the mogra flowers that smell so sweet when love's young fancies play the acrid mogra flowers still sweet though love be burnt away the boat went drifting uncontrolled the rower rowed no more but deftly turned the slender prow towards the further shore the dying sunset touched with gold the jasmine in his hair his eyes were darkly luminous she looked and found him fair and so persuasively he spoke she could not say him nay 
and when his young hands took her own she smiled and let them stay and all the youth awake in him all love of love in her all sense of white and subtle flowers that filled the twilight air combined together with the night in kind conspiracy to do love's service while the boat went drifting onwards free the mogra flowers the mogra flowers while youth's quick pulses play they are so sweet they still are sweet though passion burns away low in the boat the lovers lay and from his sable curls the jasmine flowers slipped away to rest among the girls o oh, silver lake and silver night and tender silver sky where as the hours passed the moon rose white and cold on high the mogra flowers the mogra flowers so dear to youth at play the small and subtle mogra flowers that only last a day suddenly frightened she awoke and waking vaguely saw the boat had stranded in the sedge that fringed the further shore the breeze grown chilly swayed the palms she heard still half awake a prowling jackal's hungry cry blown faintly o'er the lake she shivered but she turned to kiss his soft remembered face lit by the pallid light he lay in youth's abandoned grace but as her lips met his she paused in terror and dismay the white moon showed her by her side asleep a leper lay ah mogra flowers white mogra flowers all love is blind they say the mogra flowers so sweet so sweet though love be burnt away end of poem valgovin's song in the spring the temple bells are ringing the young green corn is springing and the marriage month is drawing very near i lie hidden in the grass and i count the moments pass for the month of marriages is drawing near soon ah soon the women spread the appointed bridal bed with hibiscus buds and crimson marriage flowers where when all the songs are done and the dear dark night begun i shall hold her in my happy arms for hours she is young and very sweet from the silver on her feet to the silver and the flowers in her hair and her beauty makes me swoon as the mogra trees at noon intoxicate the hot and quivering air ah i would the hours were fleet as her silver circled feet i am weary of the daytime and the night i am weary unto death o oh, my rose with jasmine breath with this longing for your beauty and your light end of poem youth i am not sure if i knew the truth what his case or crime might be i only know that he pleaded youth a beautiful golden plea youth with its sunlit passionate eyes its roseate velvet skin a plea to cancel a thousand lies or a thousand nights of sin the men who judged him were old and grey their eyes and their senses dim he brought the light of a warm spring day to the courthouse bare and grim could he plead in a lovelier way his judges acquitted him end of poem when love is over song of Konzada. only in august my heart was aflame catching the scent of your wind-stirred hair now 
though you spread it to soften my sleep through the night i should hardly care only last august i drank that water because it had chanced to cool your hands when love is over how little of love even the lover understands end of poem golden eyes oh amber eyes oh golden eyes oh eyes so softly gay wherein swift fancies fall and rise grow dark and fade away eyes like a little limpid pool that holds a sunset sky while on its surface calm and cool blue water lilies lie o oh, tender eyes o oh, wistful eyes you smiled on me one day and all my life in glad surprise leapt up and pleaded stay alas o oh, cruel star-like eyes so grave and yet so gay you went to lighten other skies smiled once and passed away oh you whom i name golden eyes perhaps i used to know your beauty under other skies in lives lived long ago perhaps i rode with galley slaves whose labour never ceased to bring across phoenician waves your treasure from the east maybe you were an emperor then and i a favourite slave some youth who from the lion's den you vainly tried to save maybe i reigned a mighty king the early nations knew and you were some slight captive thing some maiden whom i slew perhaps adrift on desert shores beside some shipwrecked prow i gladly gave my life for yours would i might give it now or on some sacrificial stone strange gods we satisfied perhaps you stooped and left a throne to kiss me ere i died perhaps still further back than this in times ere men were men you granted me a moment's bliss in some dark desert den when with your amber eyes alight with iridescent flame and fierce desire for love's delight towards my lair you came ah laughing ever brilliant eyes these things men may not know but something in your radiance lies that centuries ago lit up my life in one wild blaze of infinite desire to revel in your golden rays or in your light expire if this o oh strange ringed eyes be true that through all changing lives this longing love i have for you eternally survives may i not sometimes dare to dream in some far time to be your softly golden eyes may gleam responsively on me ah gentle subtly changing eyes you smiled on me one day and all my life in glad surprise leaped up imploring stay alas alas oh golden eyes so cruel and so gay you went to shine in other skies smiled once and passed away end of poem coterie by the river at coterie by the river when evening sun is low the waving palm trees quiver the golden waters glow the shining ripples shiver descending to the sea at coterie by the river she used to wait for me so pale so young so slender she was with wistful eyes as luminous and tender as coteries twilight skies her face broke into flowers red flowers at the mouth her voice she sang for hours like bulbuls in the south we sat beside the water through burning summer days 
and many things i taught her of life and all its ways of love man's loveliest duty of passion's reckless pain of youth whose transient beauty comes once but not again she lay and laughed and listened beside the water's edge the glancing river glistened and glinted through the sedge green parrots flew above her and as the daylight died her young arms drew her lover more closely to her side o oh, days so warm and golden o oh, nights so cool and still when love would not be holden and pleasure had his will days when in after leisure content to rest we lay nights when her lips soft pressure drained all my life away and while we sat together beneath the babul trees the fragrant sultry weather cooled by the river breeze if passion faltered ever and left the senses free we heard the tireless river descending to the sea i know not where she wandered or went in after days or if her youth was squandered in love's more doubtful ways perhaps beside the river she died still young and fair perchance the grasses quiver above her slumber there at cotri by the river maybe i too shall sleep the sleep that lasts forever too deep for dreams too deep maybe among the shingle and sand of floods to be her dust and mine may mingle and float away to sea ah cotri by the river when evening sun is low your faint reflections quiver your golden ripples glow you knew o oh, cotri river that love which could not last for me your palms still shiver with passions of the past end of poem farewell aziz it was not mine to fold you against my heart for any length of days i had no loveliness alas to hold you no siren voice no charm that lovers praise yet in the midst of grief and desolation solace i my despairing soul with this once for my life's eternal consolation you lent my lips your loveliness to kiss ah that one night i think love's very essence distilled itself from out my joy and pain like tropical trees whose fervid inflorescence glows gleams and dies never to bloom again often i marvel how i met the morning with living eyes after that night with you ah how i cursed the wan white light for dawning and mourned the paling stars as each withdrew yet i even i who am less than dust before you less than the lowest lintel of your door was given one breathless midnight to adore you fate having granted this can give no more end of poem a freedy love since oh beloved you are not even faithful to me who loved you so for one short night for one brief space of darkness though my absence did but endure until the dawning light since all your beauty which was mine you squandered on that which now lies dead across your door see here this knife made keen and bright to kill you you shall not see the sunrise any more lie still lie still in all the empty village who is there left to hear or heed your cry 
all are gone down to labour in the valley who will return before your time to die no use to struggle when i found you sleeping i took your hands and bound them to your side and both these slender feet too apt at straying down to the cot on which you lie are tied lie still beloved that dead thing lying yonder i hated and i killed but love is sweet and you are more than sweet to me who love you who decked my eyes with dust from off your feet give me your lips ah oh, lovely and disloyal give me yourself again before you go down through the darkness of the great blind portal all of life's best and basest you must know erstwhile beloved you are so young and fragile i held you gently as one holds a flower but now god knows what use to still be tender to one whose life is done within an hour i hurt what then death will not hurt you dearest as you hurt me just for a single night you call me cruel who laid my life in ruins to gain one little moment of delight look up look out across the open doorway the sunlight streams the distant hills are blue look at the pale pink peach trees in our garden sweet fruit will come of them but not for you the fair far snow upon those jagged mountains that gnaw against the hard blue afghan sky will soon descend set free by summer sunshine you will not see those torrents sweeping by the world is not for you from this day forward you must lie still alone who would not lie alone for one night only though returning i was when earliest dawn should break the sky there lies my lute and many strings are broken someone was playing it and someone tore the silken tassels round my hooker woven someone who plays and smokes and loves no more someone who took last night his fill of pleasure as i took mine at dawn the knife went home straight through his heart god only knows my rapture bathing my chill hands in the warm red foam and so i pain you this is only loving wait till i kill you ah oh, this soft curled hair surely the fault was mine to love and leave you even a single night you are so fair cold steel is very cooling to the fervour of overpassionate ones beloved like you nay turn your lips to mine not quite unlovely they are as yet as yet though quite untrue what will your brother say to-night returning with laden camels homewards to the hills finding you dead and me asleep beside you will he awake me first before he kills for i shall sleep here on the cot beside you when you my heart's delight are cold in death when your young heart and restless lips are silent grown chilly even beneath my burning breath when i have slowly drawn my knife across you taking my pleasure as i see you swoon i shall sleep sound worn out by love's last fervour and then god grant your kinsman kill me soon end of poem yasmini at night when passion's ebbing tide left bare the sands of truth yasmini resting by my side spoke softly of her youth and one she said was tall and slim 
two crimson rose leaves made his mouth and i was fain to follow him down to his village in the south he was to build a hut hard by the stream where palms were growing we were to live and love and lie and watch the water flowing ah dear delusive distant shore by dreams of futile fancy guilt the riverside we never saw the palm-leaf hut was never built one had a tope of mango trees where early morning noon and late the persian wheels with patient ease brought up their liquid silver freight and he was fain to rise and reach that garden sloping to the sea whose groves along the wave-swept beach should shelter him and love and me doubtless upon that western shore with ripe fruit falling to the ground there dwells the peace he hungered for the lovely peace we never found then there came one with eager eyes and keen sword ready for the fray he missed the storms of northern skies the reckless raid and skirmish gay he rose from dreams of war's alarms to make his daggers keen and bright desiring in my very arms the fiercer rapture of the fight he left me soon too soon and sought the stronger earlier love again news reached me from the kabul court afterwards nothing doubtless slain doubtless his brilliant haggard eyes long since took leave of life and light and those lithe limbs i used to prize feasted the jackal and the kite but the most loved his sixteen years shone in his cheeks transparent red my kisses were his first my tears fell on his face when he was dead he died he died i speak the truth though light love leave his memory dim he was the lover of my youth and all my youth went down with him for passion ebbs and passion flows but under every new caress the riven heart more keenly knows its own inviolate faithfulness our gods are kind and still deem fit as in old days with those to lie whose silent hearths are yet unlit by the soft light of infancy therefore one strange mysterious night alone within the temple shade recipient of a god's delight i lay enraptured unafraid also to me the boon was given but morning quickly followed mirth my son whose father stooped from heaven died in the moment of his birth when from the war beyond the seas the reckless lancers home returned their spoils were laid across my knees about my lips their kisses burned back from the comradeship of death free from the friendship of the sword with brilliant eyes and famished breath they came to me for their reward why do i tell you all these things bearing my life to you unsought when passion folds his wearied wings sleep should be follower never thought ay let us sleep the window-pane grows pale against the purple sky the dawn is with us once again the dawn 
which always means goodbye within her little trellised room beside the palm fringed sea she wakeful in the scented gloom spoke of her youth to me end of poem o jira to her lover i am waiting in the desert looking out towards the sunset and counting every moment till we meet i am waiting by the marshes and i tremble and i listen till the soft sands thrill beneath your coming feet till i see you tall and slender standing clear against the skyline a graceful shade across the lingering red while your hair the breezes ruffle turns to silver in the twilight and makes a fair faint aureole round your head far away towards the sunset i can see a narrow river that unwinds itself in red tranquillity i can hear its rippled meeting and the gurgle of its greeting as it mingles with the loved and long-sought sea in the purple sky above me showing dark against the starlight long wavering flights of homeward birds fly low they cry each one to the other and their weird and wistful calling makes most melancholy music as they go oh my dearest hasten hasten it is lonely here already have i heard the jackal's first assembling cry and among the purple shadows of the mangroves and the marshes fitful echoes of their footfalls passing by ah oh, come soon my arms are empty and so weary for your beauty i am thirsty for the music of your voice come to make the marshes joyous with the sweetness of your presence let your nearing feet bid all the sands rejoice my hands my lips are feverish with the longing and the waiting and no softness of the twilight soothes their heat till i see your radiant eyes shining stars beneath the starlight till i kiss the slender coolness of your feet ah loveliest most reluctant when you lay yourself beside me all the planets reel around me fade away and the sands grow dim uncertain i stretch out my hands towards you while i try to speak but know not what i say i am faint with love and longing and my burning eyes are gazing where the furtive jackals wage their famished strife oh your shadow on the mangroves and your step upon the sand-hills this is the loveliest evening of my life end of poem thoughts Muhammad Akram, if some day this body of mine were burned, it found no favour, alas, with you, and the ashes scattered abroad, unearned, would love die also, would thought die too? But who can answer, or who can trust, no dreams would harry the wind-blown dust? were i laid away in the furrows deep secure from jackal and passing plough would your eyes not follow me still through sleep torment me then as they torture now would you ever have loved me golden eyes had i done aught better or otherwise was i over speechful or did you yearn when i sat silent for songs or speech ah beloved i had been so apt to learn so apt had you only cared to teach but time for silence and song is done you wanted nothing my golden sun what should you want of a waning star that drifts in its lonely orbit far away from your soft effulgent light in outer plains of eternal night end of poem prayer you are all that
that is lovely and light aziz whom i adore and waking after the night i am weary with dreams of you every nerve in my heart is terse and sore as i rise to another morning apart from you i dream of your luminous eyes aziz whom i adore of the ruffled silk of your hair i dream and the dreams are lies but i love them knowing no more will ever be mine of you aziz my life's despair i would burn for a thousand days aziz whom i adore be tortured slain in unheard of ways if you pitied the pain i bore you pity your bright eyes fastened on other things are keener to sting my soul than scorpion stings you are all that is lovely to me all that is light one white rose in a desert of weariness i only live in the night the night with its fair false dreams of you you and your loveliness give me your love for a day a night an hour if the wages of sin are death i am willing to pay what is my life but a breath of passion burning away away for an unplucked flower oh aziz whom i adore aziz my one delight only one night i will die before day and trouble your life no more end of poem the aloe my life was like an aloe flower beneath an orient sky your sunshine touched it for an hour it blossomed but to die torn up cast out on rubbish heaps where red flames work their will each atom of the aloe keeps the flower time fragrance still end of poem memory how i loved you in your sleep with the starlight on your hair the touch of your lips was sweet aziz whom i adore i lay at your slender feet and against their soft palms pressed i fitted my face to rest as winds blow over the sea from citron gardens ashore came through your scented hair the breeze of the night to me my lips grew arid and dry my nerves were tense though your beauty soothed the eye it maddens the sense every curve of that beauty is known to me every tint of that delicate rose-leaf skin and these are printed on every atom of me burnt in on every fibre until i die and for this my sin i doubt if ever though dust i be the dust will lose the desire the torment and hidden fire of my passionate love for you aziz whom i adore my dust will be full of your beauty as is the blue and infinite ocean full of the azure sky in the light that waxed and waned playing about your slumber in silver bars as the palm trees swung their feathery fronds athwart the star how quiet and young you were pale as the champa flowers violet veined that sweet and fading lay in your loosened hair how sweet you were in your sleep with the starlight on your hair your throat thrown backwards bare and touched with circling moonbeams silver white on the couch's sombre shade oh aziz my one delight when youth's passionate pulses fade 
and his golden heart beats slow when across the infinite sky i see the roseate glow of my last last sunset flare i shall send my thoughts to this night and remember you as i die the one thing among all the things of this world found fair how sweet you were in your sleep with the starlight silver and sable across your hair end of poem the first lover as o'er the vessel's side she leant she saw the swimmer in the sea with eager eyes on her intent come down come down and swim with me so weary was she of her lot tired of the ship's monotony she straightway all the world forgot save the young swimmer in the sea so when the dusky dying light left all the water dark and dim she softly in the friendly night slipped down the vessel's side to him intent and brilliant brightly dark she saw his burning eager eyes and many a phosphorescent spark about his shoulders fall and rise as through the hushed and eastern night they swam together hand in hand or lay and laughed in sheer delight full length upon the level sand ah soft delusive purple night whose darkness knew no vexing moon ah cruel needless dawning light that trembles in the sky too soon end of poem Kanzada's song on the hillside the fires that burn on all the hills light up the landscape grey the arid desert land distills the fervours of the day the clear white moon sails through the skies and silvers all the night i see the brilliance of your eyes and need no other light the death sighs of a thousand flowers the fervent day has slain are wafted through the twilight hours and perfume all the plain my senses strain and try to clasp their sweetness in the air in vain in vain they only grasp the fragrance of your hair the plain is endless space expressed vast as the sky above i only feel against your breast infinities of love end of poem deserted gypsy song hillside camp she is glad to receive your turquoise ring dear and dark-eyed lover of mine i to have given you everything beauty maddens the soul like wine she is proud to have held aloof her charms slender dark-eyed lover of mine but i of the night you lay in my arms beauty maddens the sense like wine she triumphs to think that your heart is one stately dark-eyed lover of mine i had not a thought of myself not one beauty maddens the brain like wine she will speak you softly while skies are blue dear deluded lover of mine i would lose both body and soul for you beauty maddens the brain like wine while the ways are fair she will love you well dear disdainful lover of mine but i would have followed you down to hell beauty maddens the soul like wine though you lay at her feet the days to be now no longer lover of mine you can give her naught that you gave not me beauty maddened my soul like wine 
when the years have shown what is false or true beauty maddens the sight like wine you will understand how i cared for you first and only lover of mine end of poem the plains how one loves them these white horizons whether desert or sea vague and vast and infinite faintly clear surely hid in the far away unknown there lie the things so longed for and found not found not here only where some passionate level land stretches itself in reaches of golden sand only where the sea line is joined to the sky line clear beyond the curve of ripple or white foamed crest shall the weary eyes distressed by the broken skies broken by minaret mountain or towering tree shall the weary eyes be assuaged be assuaged and rest end of poem lost delight after the hazara war i lie alone beneath the almond blossoms where we two lay together in the spring and now as then the mountain snows are melting this year as last the watercourses sing that was another spring and other flowers hung pink and fragile on the leafless tree the land rejoiced in other running water and i rejoiced because you were with me you with your soft eyes darkly lashed and shaded your red lips like a living laughing rose your restless amber limbs so lithe and slender now lost to me gone whither no man knows you lay beside me singing in the sunshine the rough white fur unloosened at the neck showed the smooth skin fair as the almond blossoms on which the sun could find no flaw or fleck i lie alone beneath the almond flowers i hated them to touch you as they fell and now who killed you worse ah oh, worse who loves you my soul is burning as men burn in hell how i have sought you in the crowded cities i have been mad they say for many days i know not how i came here to the valley what fate has led me through what doubtful ways somewhere i see my sword has done good service some one i killed who smiling used your name but in what country nay i have forgotten all thought is shrivelled in my heart's hot flame where are you now delight and where your beauty your subtle curls and laughing changeful face bound bruised and naked dear god grant me patience and sold in kabul in the market-place i asked of you of all men who could tell me among so many captured sold or slain what fate was yours ah dear god grant me patience my heart is burnt is burnt with fire and pain oh lost delight my heart is almost breaking my sword is broken and my feet are sore the people look at me and say in passing he will not leave the village any more for as the evening falls the fever rises 
with frantic thoughts careering through the brain wild thoughts of you ah dear god grant me patience my soul is hurt beyond all men call pain i lie alone beneath the almond blossoms and see the white snow melting on the hills till Horasan is gay with water courses glad with the tinkling sound of running rills and well i know that when the fragile petals fall softly ere the first green leaves appear ah for these last few days god grant me patience since delight is not i shall not be here end of poem unforgotten do you ever think of me you who died ere our youth's first fervour chilled with your soft eyes closed and your pulses stilled lying alone aside do you ever think of me left in the light from the endless calm of your dawnless night i am faithful always i do not say that the lips which thrilled to your lips of old to lesser kisses are always cold had you wished for this in its narrow sense our love perhaps had been less intense but as we held faithfulness you and i i am faithful always as you who lie asleep for ever beneath the grass while the days and nights and the seasons pass pass away i keep your memory near my heart my brilliant beautiful guiding star till long life over i too depart to the infinite night where perhaps you are oh are you anywhere loved so well i would rather know you alive in hell than think your beauty is nothing now with its deep dark eyes and its tranquil brow where the hair fell softly can this be true that nothing nowhere exists of you nothing nowhere oh loved so well i have never forgotten do you still keep thoughts of me through your dreamless sleep oh gone from me lost in eternal night lost star of light risen splendidly set so soon through the weariness of life's afternoon i dream of your memory yet my loved and lost whom i could not save my youth went down with you to the grave though other planets and stars may rise i dream of your soft and sorrowful eyes and i cannot forget end of poem song of fez Ullah, just at the time when jasmines bloom most sweetly in the summer weather lost in the scented jungle gloom one sultry night we spent together we love and night together blent a trinity of tranced content yet while your lips were wholly mine to kiss to drink from to caress we heard some far-off faint distress harsh drop of poison in sweet wine lessening the fullness of delight some quivering note of human pain which rose and fell and rose again in plaintive sobs throughout the night spoiling the perfumed moonless hours we spent among the jasmine flowers end of poem story of lilavanti 
they lay the slender body down with all its wealth of wetted hair only a daughter of the town but very young and slight and fair the eyes whose light one cannot see are sombre doubtless like the tresses the mouth's soft curving seem to be a roseate series of caresses and where the skin has all but dried the air is sultry in the room upon her breast and either side it shows a soft and amber bloom by women here who knew her life a leper husband i am told took all this loveliness to wife when it was barely ten years old and when the child in shocked dismay fled from the hated husband's care he caught and tied her so they say down to his bedside by her hair to some low quarter of the town escaped a second time she flew her beauty brought her great renown and many lovers here she knew when as the mystic eastern night with purple shadow filled the air behind her window framed in light she sat with jasmine in her hair at last she loved a youth who chose to keep this wild flower for his own he in his garden set his rose where it might bloom for him alone cholera came her lover died want drove her to the streets again and women found her there who tried to turn her beauty into gain but she who in those garden ways had learnt of love would now no more be bartered in the market-place for silver as in days before that former life she strove to change she sold the silver off her arms while all the world grew cold and strange to broken health and fading charms till finding lovers but no friend nor any place to rest or hide she grew despairing at the end slipped softly down a well and died and yet how short when all is said this little life of love and tears her age they say beside her bed to-day is only fifteen years end of poem the garden by the bridge the desert sands are heated parched and dreary the tigers rend alive their quivering prey in the near jungle here the kites rise weary too gorged with living food to fly away all night the hungry jackals howl together over the carrion in the river bed or seize some small soft thing of fur or feather whose dying shrieks on the night air are shed i hear from yonder temple in the distance whose roof with obscene carven gods is piled reiterated with a sad insistence sobs of perhaps some immolated child strange rites here where the archway's shade is deeper are consummated in the river bed pariahs steal a rotten railway sleeper to burn the bodies of their cholera dead but yet their lust their hunger cannot shame them goaded by fierce desire that flays and stings poor beasts and poorer men nay who shall blame them blame the inherent cruelty of things the world is horrible and i am lonely let me rest here where yellow roses bloom and find forgetfulness remembering only your face beside me in the scented gloom 
nay do not shrink i am not here for passion i crave no love only a little rest although i would my face lay lover's fashion against the tender coolness of your breast i am so weary of the curse of living the endless aimless torture tumult fears surely if life were any god's free giving he seeing his gift long since went blind with tears seeing us our fruitless strife our futile praying our luckless present and our blood-stained past poor players who make a trick or two in playing but know that death must win the game at last as round the fowler with feathered slaughter the little joyous lark unconscious sings as the pink lotus floats on azure water innocent of the mud from whence it springs you walk through life unheeding all the sorrow the fear and pain set close around your way meeting with hopeful eyes each gay to-morrow living with joy each hour of glad to-day i love to have you thus nay dear lie quiet how should these reverent fingers wrong your hair so calmly careless of the rush and riot that rages round us seething everywhere you do not understand you think your beauty does but inflame my senses to desire till all you hold as loyalty and duty is shrunk and shrivelled in the ardent fire you wrong me wearied out with thought and grieving as though the whole world's sorrow eat my heart i come to gaze upon your face believing its beauty is as ointment to the smart lie still and let me in my desolation caress the soft loose hair a moment's span since loveliness is life's one consolation and love the only lethe left to man ah give me here beneath the trees in flower beside the river where the fireflies pass one little dusky all-consoling hour lost in the shadow of the long-grown grass give me oh you whose arms are soft and slender whose eyes are nothing but one long caress against your heart so innocent and tender a little love and some forgetfulness end of poem fate knows no tears just as the dawn of love was breaking across the weary world of grey just as my life once more was waking as roses waken late in may fate blindly cruel and havoc making stepped in and carried you away memories have i none in keeping of times i held you near my heart of dreams when we were near to weeping that dawn should bid us rise and part never alas i saw you sleeping with soft closed eyes and lips apart breathing my name still through your dreaming ah had you stayed such things had been but fate unheeding human scheming serenely reckless came between fate with her cold eyes hard and gleaming unscared by all the sorrow seen ah well beloved i never told you i did not show in speech or song 
how at the end i longed to fold you close in my arms so fierce and strong the longing grew to have and hold you you and you only all life long they who know nothing call me fickle keen to pursue and loath to keep ah could they see these tears that trickle from eyes erstwhile too proud to weep could see me prone beneath the sickle while pain and sorrow stand and reap unopened scarce yet overblown lie the hopes that rose-like round me grew the lights are low and more than lonely this life i lead apart from you come back come back i want you only and you who loved me never knew you loved me pleaded for compassion on all the pain i would not share and i in weary halting fashion was loath to listen long to care but now dear god i faint with passion for your far eyes and distant hair yes i am faint with love and broken with sleepless nights and empty days i want your soft words fiercely spoken your tender looks and wayward ways want that strange smile that gave me token of many things that no man says cold was i weary slow to waken till startled by your ardent eyes i felt the soul within me shaken and long forgotten senses rise but in that moment you were taken and thus we lost our paradise farewell we may not now recover that golden then misspent passed by we shall not meet as loved and lover here or hereafter you and i my time for loving you is over love has no future but to die and thus we part with no believing in any chance of future years we have no idle self-deceiving no half consoling hopes and fears we know the gods grant no retrieving a wasted chance fate knows no tears end of poem verses fez Ulla. just in the hush before the dawn a little wistful wind is born a little chilly errant breeze that thrills the grasses stirs the trees and as it wanders on its way while yet the night is cool and dark ere the first carol of the lark its plaintive murmurs seem to say i wait the sorrows of the day end of poem two songs by sitara of kashmir beloved your hair was golden as tender tints of sunrise as corn beside the river in softly varying hues i loved you for your slightness your melancholy sweetness your changeful eyes that promised what your lips would still refuse you came to me and loved me were mine upon the river the azure waters saw us and the blue transparent sky the lotus flowers knew it our happiness together while life was only river only love and you and i love wakened on the river to sounds of running water with silver stars for witness and reflected stars for light awakened to existence with ripples for first music and sunlight on the river for earliest sense of sight love grew upon the river among the scented flowers 
the open rosy flowers of the lotus buds in bloom love brilliant as the morning more fervent than the noonday and tender as the twilight in its blue transparent gloom love died upon the river cold snow upon the mountains the lotus leaves turned yellow and the water very grey our kisses faint and falter the clinging hands unfasten the golden time is over and our passion dies away away to be forgotten a ripple on the river that flashes in the sunset that flashed and died away end of poem second song the girl from baltistan throb 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 far away in the blue transparent night on the outer horizon of dreaming consciousness she hears the sound of her lover's nearing boat afar afloat on the river's loneliness where the stars are the only light hears the sound of the straining wood like a broken sob of a heart's distress loving misunderstood she lies with her loose hair spent in soft disorder on a silken sheet with a purple woven border every cell of her brain is latent fire every fibre tense with restrained desire and the straining oars sound clearer clearer the boat is approaching nearer nearer how to wait through the moment's space till i see the light of my lover's face throb 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 the sound dies down the stream till it only clings at the senses edge like a half-remembered dream doubtless he in the silence lies his fair face turned to the tender skies starlight touching his sleeping eyes while his boat is caught in the thick-set sedge and the waters round it gurgle and sob or floats set free on the river's tide oars laid aside she is awake and knows no rest passion dies and is dispossessed of his brief despotic power but the brain once kindled would still be a fire were the whole world pasture to its desire and all of love in a single hour a single wine cup filled to the brim given to slake its thirst some there are who are thus wise cursed times that follow fulfilled desire are of all their hours the worst they find no respite and reach no rest though passion fail and desire grow dim no assuagement comes from the thing possessed for possession feeds the fire oh for the life of the bright-hued things whose marriage and death are one a floating fusion on golden wings alit with passion and sun but we who remarry a thousand times as the spirit or senses will in a thousand ways in a thousand climes we remain unsatisfied still as her lover left her alone awake she lies with a sleepless brain and weary half-closed eyes she turns her face where the purple silk is spread still sweet with delicate perfume his presence shed her arms remember his vanished beauty still and 
reminiscent of clustered curls her fingers thrill while the wonderful starlit night wears slowly on till the light of another day serene and wan pierces the eastern skies end of poem palm trees by the sea love let me thank you for this now we have drifted apart wandered away from the sea for the fresh touch of your kiss for the young warmth of your heart for your youth given to me thanks for the curls of your hair softer than silk to the hand for the clear gaze of your eyes for yourself delicate fair seen as you lay on the sand under the violet skies thanks for the words that you said secretly tenderly sweet all through the tropical day till when the sunset was red i who lay still at your feet felt my life ebbing away weary and worn with desire only yourself could console love let me thank you for this for that fierce fervour and fire burnt through my lips to my soul from the white heat of your kiss you were the essence of spring wayward and bright as a flame though we have drifted apart still how the syllables sing mixed in your musical name deep in the well of my heart once in the lingering light thrown from the west on the sea laid you your garments aside slender and goldenly bright glimmered your beauty set free bright as a pearl in the tide once ere the thrill of the dawn silvered the edge of the sea i who lay watching you rest pale in the chill of the morn found you still dreaming of me still by love's fancies possessed fallen on sorrowful days love let me thank you for this you were so happy with me wrapped in youth's roseate haze wanting no more than my kiss by the blue edge of the sea ah for those nights on the sand under the palms by the sea for the strange dream of those days spent in the passionate land for your youth given to me i am your debtor always End of poem. Song by Gulbaz. Is it safe to lie so lonely when the summer twilight closes? No companion maidens, only you asleep among the roses? Thirteen, fourteen years you number, and your hair is soft and scented. Perilous is such a slumber in the twilight all untented. Lonely loveliness means danger lying in your rose-leaf nest what if some young passing stranger broke into your careless rest but she would not heed the warning lay alone serene and slight till the rosy spears of morning slew the darkness of the night young love walking softly found her in the scented shady closes threw his ardent arms around her kissed her lips beneath the roses and she said with smiles and blushes would that i had sooner known never now the morning thrushes wake and find me all alone since you said the rose-leaf cover sweet protection gave but slight I have found this dear young lover to protect me through the night. End of poem. Kashmiri song. Pale hands I loved beside the Shalimar. Where are you now? Who lies beneath your spell? Whom do you lead on rapture's roadway far before you agonize them in farewell? Oh, pale dispensers of my joys and pains 
holding the doors of heaven and of hell how the hot blood rushed wildly through the veins beneath your touch until you waved farewell pale hands pink-tipped like lotus buds that float on those cool waters where we used to dwell i would have rather felt you round my throat crushing out life than waving me farewell end of poem reverie of hormuz the persian softly the feathery palm trees fade in the violet distance faintly the lingering light touches the edge of the sea sadly the music of waves drifts faint as an anthem's insistence heard in the aisles of a dream over the sand hills to me now that the lights are reversed and the singing changed into sighing now that the wings of our fierce fugitive passion are furled take i unto myself all alone in the light that is dying much of the sorrow that lies hid at the heart of the world sad am i sad for your loss for failing the charm of your presence even the sunshine has paled leaving the zenith less blue even the ocean lessens the light of its green opalescence since to my sorrow i loved loved and grew weary of you why was our passion so fleeting why had the flush of your beauty only so slender a spell only so futile a power yet even thus ever is life save when long custom or duty moulds into sober fruit love's fragile and fugitive flower fain would my soul have been faithful never an alien pleasure lured me away from the light lit in your luminous eyes but ever desire of the mind satisfied once and at leisure to criticise balance take counsel assuredly dies all through the centuries man has gathered his flower and fenced it infinite strife to attain infinite struggle to keep holding his treasure awhile all fate and all forces against it knowing it is no more if ever his vigilance sleep but we have altered the world as pitiful man has grown stronger so that the things we love are as easily kept as won therefore the ancient fight can engage and detain us no longer and all too swiftly alas passion is over and done far too speedily now we can gather the coveted treasure enjoy it a while be satiated begin to tire and what shall be done henceforth with the profitless after leisure who has the breath to kindle the ash of a faded fire ah if it only had lasted after my ardent endeavour came the delirious joy flooding my life like a sea days of delight that are burnt on the brain for ever and ever days and nights when you loved before you grew weary of me softly the sunset decreases dim in the violet distance even as love's own fervour has faded away from me leaving the weariness the monotonous weight of existence 
all the farewells in the world weep in the sound of the sea end of poem sunstroke o oh, straight white road that runs to meet across green fields the blue green sea you knew the little weary feet of my child bride that was to be her people brought her from the shore one golden day in sultry june and i stood waiting at the door praying my eyes might see her soon with eager arms wide open thrown now never to be satisfied ere i could make my love my own she closed her amber eyes and died alas alas they took no heed how frail she was my little one but brought her here with cruel speed beneath the fierce relentless sun we laid her on the marriage bed the bridal flowers in her hand a maiden from the ocean led only alas to die in land i walk alone the air is sweet the white road wanders to the sea i dream of those two little feet that grew so tired in reaching me end of poem adoration who does not feel desire unending to solace through his daily strife with some mysterious mental blending the hungry loneliness of life until by sudden passion shaken as terriers shake a rat at play he finds all blindly he has taken the old hereditary way yet in the moment of communion the very heart of passion's fire his spirit spurns the mortal union not this not this the soul's desire o oh, you by whom my life is riven and reft away from my control take back the hours of passion given love me one moment from your soul although i once in ardent fashion implored you long to give me this in hopes to stem or stifle passion your hair to touch your lips to kiss now that your gracious self has granted the loveliness you hold as not i find alas not that i wanted possession has not stifled thought desire its aim has only shifted built hopes upon another plan and i in love for you have drifted beyond all passion known to man beyond all dreams of soft caresses the solacing of any kiss beyond the fragrance of your tresses once i had sold my soul for this but now i crave no mortal union thanks for that sweetness in the past i need some subtle strange communion some sense that i join you at last long past the pulse and pain of passion long left the limits of all love i crave some nearer fuller fashion some unknown way beyond above some infinitely inner fusion as wave with water flame with fire let me dream once the dear delusion that i am you o oh, heart's desire your kindness lent to my caresses that beauty you so lightly prize the midnight of your sable tresses the twilight of your shadow dies ah for that gift all thanks are given yet oh adored beyond control count all the passionate past forgiven and love me once once from your soul end of poem three songs of zahiruddin the tropic day's redundant charms cool twilight soothes away the sun slips down behind the palms 
and leaves the landscape grey i want to take you in my arms and kiss your lips away i wake with sunshine in my eyes and find the morning blue a night of dreams behind me lies and all were dreams of you ah how i wish the while i rise that what i dream were true the weary day's laborious pace i hasten and beguile by fancies which i backwards trace to things i loved erstwhile the weary sweetness of your face your faint elusive smile the silken softness of your hair where faint bronze shadows are your strangely slight and youthful air no passions seem to mar oh why since fate has made you fair must fortune keep you far thus spent the day so long and bright less hot and brilliant seems till in a final flare of light the sun withdraws his beams then in the coolness of the night i meet you in my dreams end of poem second song how much i loved that way you had of smiling most when very sad a smile which carried tender hints of delicate tints and warbling birds of sun and spring and yet more than all other thing of weariness beyond all words none other ever smiled that way none that i know the essence of all gaiety lay of all mad mirth that men may know in that sad smile serene and slow that on your lips was wont to play it needed many delicate lines and subtle curves and roseate tints to make that weary radiant smile it flickered as beneath the vines the sunshine through green shadow glints on the pale path that lies below flickered and flashed and died away but the strange thoughts it woke meanwhile were wont to stay thoughts of strange things you used to know in dim dead lives lived long ago some madly mirthful merriment whose lingering light is yet unspent some unimaginable woe your strange sad smile forgets these not though you yourself long since forgot end of poem third song written during fever to-night the clouds hang very low they take the hilltops to their breast and lay their arms about the fields the wind that fans me lying low restless with great desire for rest no cooling touch of freshness yields i sleepless through the stifling heat watch the pale lightning's constant glow between the wide-set open doors i lie and long amidst the heat the fever that my senses know for that cool slenderness of yours so delicate and cool you are a rose-leaf that has lain in snow a snowflake tinged with sunset fire you do not know so young you are how fever fans the senses glow to uncontrollable desire and fills the spaces of the night with furious and frantic thought one would not dare to think by day ah if you came to me to-night these visions would be turned to naught these hateful dreams be held at bay but you are far 
and loneliness my only lover through the night and not for any word or prayer would you console my loneliness or lend yourself serene and slight and the cool clusters of your hair all through the night i long for you as shipwrecked men in tropics yearn for the fresh flow of streams and springs my fevered fancies follow you as dying men in deserts turn their thoughts to clear and chilly things such dreams are mine and such my thirst unceasing and unsatisfied until the night is burnt away among these dreams and fevered thirst and through the open doorways glide the white feet of the coming day end of poem the regret of the rani in the hall of peacocks this man has taken my husband's life and laid my brethren low no sister indeed were i no wife to pardon and let him go yet why does he look so young and slim as he weak and wounded lies how hard for me to be harsh to him with his soft appealing eyes his hair is ruffled upon the stone and the slender wrists are bound so young and yet he has overthrown his scores on the battle-ground would i were only a slave to-day to whom it were right and meet to wash the stains of the war away the dust from the weary feet were i but one of my serving girls to solace his pain to rest shake out the sand from the soft loose curls and hold him against my breast have we such beauty about our throne such lithe and delicate strength would god that i were the senseless stone to support his slender length i hate those wounds that trouble my sight unknown how i wish you lay alone in my silken tent to-night while i charmed the pain away i would lay you down on the royal bed i would bathe your wounds with wine and setting your feet against my head dream you were lover of mine my crown is heavy upon my hair the jewels weigh on my breast all i would leave with delight to share your pale and passionate rest but hands grow restless about their swords lips murmur below their breath the queen is silent too long my lords take him away to death end of poem protest by zahiruddin alas alas this wasted night with all its jasmine scented air its thousand stars serenely bright i lie alone and long for you long for your champa scented hair your tranquil eyes of twilight hue long for the close curved delicate lips their sinuous sweetness laid on mine here where the slender fountain drips here where the yellow roses glow pale in the tender silver shine the stars across the garden throw alas alas poor passionate youth why must he spend these lonely nights the poets hardly speak the truth despite their praiseful litany his season is not all delights nor every night an ecstasy the very power and passion that make might make his days one golden dream how he must suffer for their sake till in their fierce and futile rage the baffled senses almost deem they might be happier in old age age that can find red roses sweet and yet not crave a rose-red mouth hear bulbuls with no wish that feet of sweeter singers went his way 
inhale warm breezes from the south yet never feel his fancy stray from some near village i can hear the cadenced throbbing of a drum now softly distant now more near and in an almost human fashion it plaintive wistful seems to come laden with sighs of fitful passion to mock me lying here alone among the thousand useless flowers upon the fountain's border stone cold stone that chills me as i lie counting the slowly passing hours by the white spangles in the sky some feast the tom-toms celebrate where close together side by side gay in their gauze and tinsel state with lips serene and downcast eyes sit the young bridegroom and his bride while round them songs and laughter rise they are together why are we so hopelessly so far apart oh i implore you come to me come to me solace of mine eyes come consolation of my heart light of my senses what replies a little languid mocking breeze that rustles through the jasmine flowers and stirs among the tamarind trees a little gurgle of the spray that drips unheard through silent hours then breaks in sudden bubbling play wind have you never loved a rose and water seek you not the sea why therefore mock at my repose it is my fault i am alone beneath the feathery tamarind tree whose shadows over me are thrown nay i am mad indeed with thirst for all to me this night denied and drunk with longing and accursed beyond all chance of sleep or rest with love unslaked unsatisfied and dreams of beauty unpossessed hating the hour that brings you not mad at the space betwixt us twain sad for my empty arms so hot and fevered even the chilly stone can scarcely cool their burning pain and oh this sense of being alone take hence o oh night your wasted hours you bring me not my life's delight my star of stars my flower of flowers you leave me loveless and forlorn pass on most false and futile night pass on and perish in the dawn end of poem famine song death and famine on every side and never a sign of rain the bones of those who have starved and died unburied upon the plain what care have i that the bones bleach white to-morrow they may be mine but i shall sleep in your arms to-night and drink your lips like wine cholera riot and sudden death and the brave red blood set free the glazing eye and the failing breath but what are these things to me your breath is quick and your eyes are bright and your blood is red like wine and i shall sleep in your arms to-night and hold your lips with mine i hear the sound of a thousand tears like softly pattering rain i see the fever folly and fears fulfilling man's tale of pain but for the moment your star is bright i revel beneath its shine for i shall sleep in your arms to-night and feel your lips on mine and you need not deem me over cold that i do not stop to think for all the pleasure this life may hold is on the precipice brink thought could but lessen my soul's delight and to-day she may not pine for i shall lie in your arms to-night and close your lips with mine i trust what sorrow the fates may send i may carry quietly through and pray for grace when i reach the end 
to die as a man should do to-day at least must be clear and bright without a sorrowful sign because i sleep in your arms to-night and feel your lips on mine so on i work in the blazing sun to bury what dead we may but glad oh glad when the day is done and the night falls round us grey would those we covered away from sight had a rest so sweet as mine for i shall sleep in your arms to-night and drink your lips like wine end of poem the window overlooking the harbour sad is the evening all the level sand lies left and lonely while the restless sea tired of the green caresses of the land withdraws into its own infinity but still more sad this white and chilly dawn filling the vacant spaces of the sky while little winds blow here and there forlorn and all the stars weary of shining die and more than desolate to wake to rise leaving the couch where softly sleeping still what through the past night made my heaven lies and looking out across the window sill see from the upper window's vantage ground mankind slip into harness once again and wearily resume his daily round of love and labour toil and strife and pain how the sad thoughts slip back across the night the whole thing seems so aimless and so vain what use the raptures passion and delight burnt out as though they could not wake again the worn-out nerves and weary brain repeat the question whither all these passions tend this curious thirst so painful and so sweet so fierce so very short-lived to what end even if seeking for ourselves the race the only immortality we know even if from the flower of our embrace some spark should kindle or some fruit should grow what were the use the gain to us or it that we should cause another you or i another life from our light passion lit to suffer like ourselves a while and die what aim what end indeed our being runs in a closed circle all we know or see tends to assure us that a thousand suns teeming perchance with life have ceased to be ah the grey dawn seems more than desolate and the past night of passion worse than waste love but a useless flower that soon or late turns to a fruit with bitter aftertaste youth even youth seems futile and forlorn while the new day grows slowly white above pale and reproachful comes the chilly dawn after the fervour of a night of love end of poem back to the border the tremulous morning is breaking against the white waste of the sky and hundreds of birds are awaking in tamarisk bushes hard by i waiting alone in the station can hear in the distance grey blue the sound of that iron desolation the train that will bear me from you twill carry me under your casement you'll feel in your dreams as you lie the quiver from gable to basement the rush of my train sweeping by and i shall look out as i pass it your dear unforgettable door 
twas ours till last night but alas it will never be mine any more through twilight blue-gray and uncertain where frost leaves the window pane free i'll look at the tinsel-edged curtain that hid so much pleasure for me i go to my long undone duty alone in the chill and the gloom my eyes are still full of the beauty i leave in your rose-scented room lie still in your dreams for your tresses are free of my lingering kiss i keep you awake with caresses no longer be happy in this from passion you told me you hated you're now and for ever set free i pass in my train sorrow waited your house that was heaven to me you won't find a trace when you waken of me or my love of the past rise up and rejoice i have taken my longed-for departure at last my fervent and useless persistence you never need suffer again nor even perceive in the distance the smoke of my vanishing train end of poem reverie zahiruddin alone i wait till her twilight gate the night slips quietly through with shadow and gloom and purple bloom flung over the zenith blue her stars that tremble would fain dissemble light over lovers thrown her hush and mystery knows no history such as day may own day has record of pleasure and pain but things that are done by night remain for ever and ever unknown for a thousand years neath a thousand skies night has brought men love therefore the old old longings rise as the light grows dim above therefore now that the shadows close and the mists rise weird and white while time is scented with musk and rose magic with silver light i long for love will you grant me some day is over at last come as lovers have always come through the evenings of the past swiftly as lovers have always come softly as lovers have always come through the long forgotten past end of poem sea song against the planks of the cabin's side so slight a thing between them and me the great waves thundered and throbbed and sighed the great green waves of the indian sea your face was white as the foam is white your hair was curled as the waves are curled i would we had steamed and reached that night the sea's last edge the end of the world the wind blew in through the open port so freshly joyous and salt and free your hair it lifted your lips it salt and then swept back to the open sea the engines throbbed with their constant beat your heart was nearer and all i heard your lips were salt but i found them sweet while acquiescent you spoke no word so straight you lay in your narrow berth rocked by the waves and you seemed to be essence of all that is sweet on earth of all that is sad and strange at sea and you were white as the foam is white your hair was curled as the waves are curled ah had we but sailed and reached that night the sea's last edge the end of the world end of poem to the hills tis eight miles out and eight miles in just at the break of morn tis ice without and flame within to gain a kiss at dawn far 
where the lilac hills arise soft from the misty plain alone enchanted hollow lies where i at last draw rein midwinter grips this lonely land this stony treeless waste where east due east across the sand we fly in fevered haste pull up the east will soon be red the wild duck westward fly and make above my anxious head triangles in the sky like wind we go we both are still so young all thanks to fate it cuts like knives this air so chill dear god if i am late behind us wrapped in mist and sleep the ruined city lies although we race we seem to creep while lighter grow the skies eight miles out only eight miles in good going all the way but more and more the clouds begin to redden into day and every snow-tipped peak grows pink an iridescent gem my heart beats quick with joy to think how i am nearing them as mile on mile behind us falls till oh delight i see my heart's desire who softly calls across the gloom to me the utter joy of that first love no later love has given when while the skies grew light above we entered into heaven end of poem till i wake when i am dying lean over me tenderly softly stoop as the yellow roses droop in the wind from the south so i may when i wake if there be an awakening keep what lulled me to sleep the touch of your lips on my mouth end of poem his rubies told by valgovind along the hot and endless road calm and erect with haggard eyes the prisoner bore his fetters load beneath the scorching azure skies serene and tall with brows unbent without a hope without a friend he under escort onward went with death to meet him at the end the poppy fields were pink and gay on either side and in the heat their drowsy scent exhaled all day a dream-like fragrance almost sweet and when the cool of evening fell and tender colours touched the sky he still felt youth within him dwell and half forgot he had to die sometimes at night the camp-fires lit and casting fitful light around his guard would friend-like let him sit and talk a while with them unbound thus they the night before the last were resting when a group of girls across the small encampment passed with laughing lips and scented curls then in the prisoner's weary eyes a sudden light lit up once more the women saw him with surprise and pity for the chains he bore for little women wreck of crime if young and fair the criminal be here in this tropic amorous clime where love is still untamed and free and one there was she walked less fast behind the rest perhaps beguiled by his lithe form who as she passed waited a little while and smiled the guard in kindly eastern fashion smiled to themselves and let her stay so tolerant of human passion to love he has but one more day yet when the soft and scented gloom scarce lighted by the dying fire his arms caressed her youth and bloom with him it was not all desire for me he whispered as he lay but little life remains to live one thing i crave to take away you have the gift but will you give 
if i could know some child of mine would live his life and see the sun across these fields of poppies shine what should i care that mine is done to die would not be dying quite leaving a little life behind you were you kind to me to-night could grant me this but are you kind see i have something here for you for you and it if it there be soft in the gloom her glances grew with gentle tears he could not see he took the chain from off his neck hid in the silver charm there lay three rubies without flaw or fleck she answered softly i will stay he drew her close the moonless skies shed little light the fire was dead soft pity filled her youthful eyes and many tender things she said throughout the hot and silent night all that he asked of her she gave and left alone ere morning light he went serenely to the grave happy for even when the rope confined his neck his thoughts were free and centred round his secret hope the little life that was to be when poppies bloomed again she bore his child who gaily laughed and crowed while round his tiny neck he wore the rubies given on the road for his small sake she wished to wait but vainly to forget she tried and grieving for the prisoner's fate she broke her gentle heart and died end of poem song of taj mohammed dear is my inlaid sword across the border it brought me much reward dear is my mistress the jewelled treasure of an amorous hour dear beyond measure are my dreams and fancies these i adore for these i live and labour holding them more than sword or jewelled mistress for this indeed may rust and that prove faithless but till my limbs are dust i have my fancies end of poem the garden of karma karma the indian eros the daylight is dying the flying fox flying amber and amethyst burn in the sky see the sun throws a late lingering roseate kiss to the landscape to bid it good-bye the time of our trysting oh come unresisting lovely expectant on tentative feet shadow shall cover us roses bend over us making a bride chamber sacred and sweet we know not life's reason the length of its season know not if they know the great ones above we none of us sought it and few could support it were it not guilt with the glamour of love but much is forgiven to gods who have given if but for an hour the rapture of youth you do not yet know it but karma shall show it changing your dreams to his exquisite truth the fireflies shall light you and naught shall affright you nothing shall trouble the flight of the hours come for i wait for you night is too late for you come when the twilight is closing the flowers every breeze still is and scented with lilies cooled by the twilight refreshed by the dew the garden lies breathless where karma the deathless in the hushed starlight 
is waiting for you end of poem camp followers song gomel river we have left gulkach behind us are marching on apose where pleasure and rest are waiting to welcome us by and by we're falling back from the gomel across the girdau plain the camping ground is deserted we'll never come back again along the rocks and the defiles the mules and the camels wind good-bye to raimut ulla the man who is left behind for some we lost in the skirmish and some were killed in the fight but he was captured by fever in the sentry pit at night a rifle shot had been swifter less trouble a sabre thrust but his fate decided fever and each man dies as he must behind us red in the distance the wavering flames rise high the flames of our burning grass huts against the black of the sky we hear the sound of the river an ever lessening moan the hearts of us all turn backwards to where he is left alone we sing up a little louder we know that we feel bereft we're leaving the camp together and only one of us left the only one out of many and each must come to his end i wish i could stop this singing he happened to be my friend we're falling back from the goma we're marching on apose and pleasure and rest are waiting to welcome us by and by perhaps the feast will taste bitter the lips of the girls less kind because of Raimut Ulla, the man who is left behind. End of poem. Song of the Colours by Taj Muhammad, Rose Colour. Rose pink am I, the colour gleams and glows in many a flower. Her lips, those tender doors by which, in time of love, love's essence flows from him to her are dyed in delicate rose mine is the earliest ruby light that pours out of the east when day's white gates unclose on downy peach and maiden's downier cheek i in a flush of radiant bloom alight clinging at sunset to the shimmering peak I veil its snow in floods of roseate light. Azure Mine is the heavenly hue of azure skies, Where the white clouds lie softly as seraphs' wings, Mine the sweet, shadowed light in innocent eyes, Whose lovely looks light only on lovely things. Mine the blue distance, delicate and clear, mine the blue glory of the morning sea all that the soul so longs for finds not here fond eyes deceive themselves and find in me scarlet hail to the royal red of living blood let loose by steel in spirit freeing flood forced from faint forms by toil or torture torn staining the patient gates of life new-born colour of war and rage of pomp and show banners that flash red flags that flaunt and glow colour of carnage glory also shame raiment of those whom women may not name i hid in mines where unborn rubies dwell flicker and flare in fitful fire in hell the outpressed life-blood of the grape is mine hail to the royal purple red of wine 
strong am i over strong to eyes that tire in the hot hue of rapine riot flame death and despair are black war and desire the two red cards in life's unequal game green i am the life of forests and wandering streams green as the feathery reeds the florican love young as a maiden who of her marriage dreams still sweetly inexperienced in ways of love colour of youth and hope some waves are mine some emerald reaches of the evening sky see in the spring my sweet green promise shine never to be fulfilled of by and by never to be fulfilled leaves bud and ever something is wanting something falls behind the flowered solstice comes indeed but never that light and lovely summer men divined violet i were the colour of things if you they had that are hard to name of curious twisted thoughts that men call mad or oftener shame of that delicate vice that is hardly vice so reticent rare ethereal as the scent of buds and spice in this eastern air on palm-fringed shores i colour the cowrie shell with its edges curled and deep in datura poison buds i dwell in a perfumed world my lilac tinges the edge of the evening sky where the sunset clings my purple lends an imperial majesty to the robes of kings yellow gold am i and for me ever men curse and pray selling their souls and each other by night and day a sordid colour and yet i make some things fair dying sunsets fields of corn and a maiden's hair thus they discoursed in the daytime violet yellow and blue emerald scarlet and rose colour the pink and perfect hue thus they spoke in the sunshine when their beauty was manifest till the night came and the silence and gave them an equal rest end of poem la lila to the feringhi lover why above others was i so blessed and honoured to be the chosen one to hold you sleeping against my breast as now i may hold your only son twelve months ago that wonderful night you gave your life to me in a kiss have i done well for that past delight in return to have given you this look down at his face your face beloved his eyes are azure as yours are blue in every line of his form is proved how well i loved you and only you i felt the secret hope at my heart turn suddenly to the living joy and knew that your life in mine had part as golden grains in a brass alloy and learning thus that your child was mine thrilled by the sense of its stirring life i held myself as a sacred shrine afar from pleasure and pain and strife the tall unworthy i might not be of that you had deigned to cause to dwell hidden away in the heart of me as white pearls hide in a dusky shell do you remember when first you laid your lips on mine that enchanted night my eyes were timid my lips afraid you seemed so slender and strangely white i always trembled the moments flew swiftly to dawn that took you away 
but this is a small and lovely you content to rest in my arms all day oh since you have sought me lord for this and given your only child to me my life devoted to yours and his whilst i am living will always be and after death through the long to be which i think must surely keep love's laws i should you chance to have need of me am ever and always only yours end of poem on the city wall upon the city ramparts lit up by sunset gleam the blue eyes that conquer meet the darker eyes that dream the dark eyes so eastern and the blue eyes from the west the last alight with action the first so full of rest brown that seem to hold the past its magic mystery blue that catch the early light of ages yet to be meet and fall and meet again then linger look and smile time and distance all forgotten for a little while happy on the city wall in the warm spring weather all the force of nature's laws drawing them together east and west so gaily blending for a little space all the sunshine seems to centre round the enchanted place one rides down the dusty road one watches from the wall azure eyes would fain return and amber eyes recall would fain be on the ramparts and resting heart to heart but time o' love is overpast east and west must part blue eyes so clear and brilliant brown eyes so dark and deep those are dim and ride away these cry themselves to sleep oh since love is all so short the sob so near the smile blue eyes that always conquer us is it worth your while end of poem love lightly there were roses in the hedges and sunshine in the sky red lilies in the sedges where the water rippled by a thousand baubles singing oh how jubilant they were and a thousand flowers flinging their sweetness on the air but you who sat beside me had a shadow in your eyes their sadness seemed to chide me when i gave you scant replies you asked did i remember and when had i ceased to care in vain you fanned the ember for the love flame was not there and so since you are tired of me you ask me to forget what is the use of caring now that you no longer care when love is dead his memory can only bring regret but how can i forget you with the flowers in your hair what use the scented roses or the azure of the sky they are sweet when love reposes but then he had to die what could i do in leaving you but ask you to forget i suffered too in grieving you i all but loved you yet but half love is treason that no lover can forgive i had loved you for a season i had no more to give you saw my passion faltered for i could but let you see and it was not i that altered but fate that altered me and so since i am tired of love i ask you to forget what is the use you caring 
now that i no longer care when love is dead his memory can only bring regret forget me oh forget me and my flower-scented hair end of poem no rival like the past as those who eat a luscious fruit sun-baked full of sweet juice with zest until they find it finished and their appetite unslaked and so return and eat the paired-off rind we who in youth set white and careless teeth in the ripe fruits of pleasure while they last later creep back to gnaw the cast-off sheath and find there is no rival like the past end of poem verse by taj mohammed when first i loved i gave my very soul utterly unreserved to love's control but love deceived me wrenched my youth away and made the gold of life forever grey long i lived lonely yet i tried in vain with any other joy to stifle pain there is no other joy i learned to know and so returned to love as long ago yet i this little while ere i go hence love very lightly now in self-defence end of poem lines by taj mohammed this passion is but an ember of a sun of a fire long set i could not live and remember and so i love and forget you say and the tone is fretful that my morning days were few you call me over forgetful my god if you only knew end of poem the temple dancing girl you will be mine those lightly dancing feet falling as softly on the careless street as the wind loosened petals of a flower will bring you here at the appointed hour and all the temple's little links and laws will not for long protect your loveliness i have a stronger force to aid my cause nature's great law to love and to possess throughout those sleepless watches when i lay wakeful desiring what i might not see i knew it helped those hours from dusk to day in this one thing fate would be kind to me you will consent through all my veins like wine this prescience flows your lips meet mine above your clear soft eyes look upward into mine dim in a silent ecstasy of love the clustered softness of your waving hair that curious paleness which enchants me so and all your delicate strength and youthful air destiny will compel you to bestow refuse withdraw and hesitate a while your young reluctance does but fan the flame my partner love waits with a tender smile who play against him play a losing game i strong in nothing else have strength in this the subtlest most resistless force we know is aiding me and you must stoop and kiss the genius of the race will have it so yet make it not too long nor too intense my thirst lest i should break beneath the strain and the worn nerves and over-wearied sense enjoy not what they spent themselves to gain lest in the hour when you consent to share that human passion beauty makes divine i overworn should find you over fair lest i should die before i make you mine you will consent those slim reluctant feet falling as lightly on the careless street 
as the white petals of a wind-worn flower will bring you here at the appointed hour end of poem hera sings farewell to burma on the wooden deck of the wooden junk silent alone we lie with silver foam about the bow and a silver moon in the sky a glimmer of dimmer silver here from the anklets round your feet our lips may close on each other's lips but never our souls may meet for though in my arms you lie at rest your name i have never heard to carry a thought between us two we have not a single word and yet what matter we do not speak when the ardent eyes have spoken the way of love is a sweeter way when the silence is unbroken as a wayward fancy tired at times of the cultured damask rose drifts away to the tangled copse where the wild anemone grows so the ordered and licit love ashore is hardly fresh and free as this light love in the open wind and salt of the outer sea so sweet you are with your tinted cheeks and your small caressive hands what if i carried you home with me where our golden temple stands yet this were folly indeed to bind in fetters of permanence a passing dream whose enchantment charms because of its transience life is ever a slave to time we have but an hour to rest her steam is up and her lighters leave the vessel that takes me west and never again we two shall meet as we chance to meet to-night on the junk whose painted eyes gaze forth in desolate want of sight and what is love at its best but this conceived by a passing glance nursed and reared in a transient mood on a drifting sea of chance for rudderless craft are all our loves among the rocks and the shoals well we may know one another's speech but never each other's souls give here your lips and kiss me again we have but a moment more before we set the sail to the mast before we loosen the oar good-bye to you and my thanks to you for the rest you let me share while this night drifted away to the past to join the nights that were end of poem starlight oh beautiful stars when you see me go hither and thither in search of love do you think me faithless who gleam and glow serene and fixed in the blue above oh stars so golden it is not so but there is a garden i dare not see there is a place where i fear to go since the charm and glory of life to me the brown earth covered there long ago oh stars you saw it you know you know hither and thither i wandering go with aimless haste and wearying fret in a search for pleasure and love not so seeking desperately to forget you see so many o oh stars you know end of poem sampan song a little breeze blew over the sea and it came from far away across the fields of millet and rice all warm with sunshine and sweet with spice it lifted his curls and kissed him thrice as upon the deck he lay it said o oh, idle upon the sea awake and with sleep have done 
haul up the widest sail of the prow and come with me to the rice fields now she longs oh how can i tell you how to show you your first-born son end of poem song of the devoted slave there is one god muhammad his prophet had i his power i would take the topmost peaks of the snow-clad himalayas and range them around your dwelling during the heats of summer to cool the airs that fan your serene and delicate presence had i the power your courtyard should ever be filled with the fleetest of camels laden with inlaid armour jewels and trappings for horses ripe dates from egypt and spices and musk from arabia and the sacred waters of Zemzema well transported thither should bubble and flow in your chamber to bathe the delicate slender and wayworn feet of my lord returning from travel had i the power fine woven silk from the further east should conceal your beauty clinging around you in amorous folds caressive silken beautiful long-lashed sweet-voiced persian boys should kneeling serve you and the floor beneath your sandaled feet should be smooth and golden had i the power and if ever your clear and stately thoughts should turn to women king's daughters maidens should be appointed to your caresses that the youth and the strength of my lord might never be wasted in light or sterile love but enrich the world with his children whilst i should sit in the outer court of the water palace to await the time when you went forth for pleasure or warfare descending the stairs rose-crowned or armed and arrayed in purple to mark the place where your steps had fallen and kiss the footprints had i the power end of poem the singer the singer only sang the joy of life for all too well alas the singer knew how hard the daily toil how keen the strife how salt the falling tear the joys how few he who thinks hard soon finds it hard to live learning the secret bitterness of things so leaving thought the singer strove to give a level lightness to his lyric strings he only sang of love its joy and pain but each man in his early season loves each finds the old lost paradise again unfolding leaves and roses nesting doves and though that sunlit time flies all too fleetly delightful days that dance away too soon its early morning freshness lingers sweetly throughout life's grey and tedious afternoon and he whose dreams enshrine her tender eyes and she whose senses wait his waking hand impatient youth that tired but sleepless lies will read perhaps and reading understand oh roseate lips he would have loved to kiss oh eager lovers that he never knew what should you know of him or words of his but all the songs he sang were sung for you end of poem malaria he lurks among the reeds beside the marsh red oleanders twisted in his hair his eyes are haggard and his lips are harsh upon his breast the bones show gaunt and bare the green and stagnant waters lick his feet and from their filmy iridescent scum clouds of mosquitoes gauzy in the heat rise with his gifts death and delirium his messengers they bear the deadly taint on spangled wings aloft and far away 
making thin music strident and yet faint from golden eve to silver break of day the baffled sleeper hears the incessant whine through his tormented dreams and finds no rest the thirsty insects use his blood for wine probe his blue veins and pasture on his breast while far away he in the marshes lies staining the stagnant water with his breath an endless hunger burning in his eyes a famine unassuaged whose food is death he hides among the ghostly mists that float over the water weird and white and chill and peasants passing in their laden boat shiver and feel a sense of coming ill a thousand burn and die he takes no heed their bones unburied strewn upon the plain only increase the frenzy of his greed to add more victims to the already slain he loves the haggard frame the shattered mind gloats with delight upon the glazing eye yet in one thing his cruelty is kind he sends them lovely dreams before they die dreams that bestow on them their heart's desire visions that find them mad and leave them blessed to sink forgetful of the fever's fire softly as in a lover's arms to rest end of poem fancy far in the further east the skilful craftsman fashioned this fancy for the west's delight this rose and azure dragon crouching softly upon the satin skin close-grained and white and you lay silent while his slender needles pricked the intricate pattern on your arm combining deftly cruelty and beauty that subtle union whose child is charm charm irresistible the lovely something we follow in our dreams but may not reach the unattainable divine enchantment hinted in music never heard in speech this from the blue design exhales towards me as incense rises from the homes of prayer while the unfettered eyes allured and rested urge the forbidden lips to stoop and share share in the sweetness of the rose and azure traced in the dragon's form upon the white curve of the arm ah curb thyself my fancy where wouldst thou drift in this enchanted flight end of poem Ferraza. the evening sky was as green as jade as emerald turf by lotus lake behind the kafila far she strayed the pearls are lost if the necklace break a lingering freshness touched the air from palm trees clustered around a spring the great grim desert lay vast and bare but youth is ever a careless thing the raiders threw her upon the sand men of the wilderness know no laws they tore the amethysts off her hand and rent the folds of her veiling gauze they struck the lips that they might have kissed pitiless they to her pain and fear and wrenched the gold from her broken wrist no use to cry there were none to hear her scarlet mouth and her onyx eyes her braided hair in its silken sheen were surely meet for a lover's prize but fate dissented and stepped between across the zenith the vultures fly cruel of beak and heavy of wing thus it was written that she should die inshallah death is a transient thing end of poem this month the almonds bloom at kandahar i hate this city seated on the plain the clang and clamour of the hot bazaar knowing amid the pauses of my pain this month the almonds bloom in kandahar the almond trees that sheltered my delight 
screening my happiness as evening fell it was well worth that most enchanted night this life in torment and the next in hell people are kind to me one more than kind her lashes lie like fans upon her cheek but kindness is a burden on my mind and it is weariness to hear her speak for though that kaffir's bullet holds me here my thoughts are ever free and wander far to where the lilac hills rise soft and clear beyond the almond groves of kandahar he followed me to sebe to the fair the horse fair where he shot me weeks ago but since they fettered him i have no care that my returning steps to health are slow they will not loose him till they know my fate and i rest here till i am strong to slay meantime my heart's delight may safely wait among the almond blossoms sweet as they that cursed kaffir well he won by day but i won what i so desired by night my arms held what his lack till judgment day also the game is not yet over quite wait amir ali wait till i come forth to kill before the almond trees are green to raise thy very memory from the north so that thou art not and thou hast not been aha friend amir ali it is duty to rid the world from sheer dogs like thee they are but ill-placed moles on islam's beauty such as the faithful cannot calmly see also thy bullet hurts me not a little thy sheer blood might serve to salve the ill maybe some afghan promises are brittle never a promise to oneself to kill now i grow stronger i have days of leisure to shape my coming vengeance as i lie and undisturbed by call of war or pleasure can dream of many ways a man may die i shall not torture thee thy friends might rally some fate assist thee and prove false to me oh shouldst thou now escape me amir ali this would torment me through eternity i shufajan i will be quiet indeed give here the hakim's powder if thou wilt and thou mayst sit for i perceive thy need and rest thy soft-haired head upon my quilt thy gentle love will not disturb a mind that loves and hates beneath a fiercer star also thou know'st my heart is left behind among the almond trees of kandahar end of poem and end of the garden of karma by lawrence hope thank you for listening